Folks at home, welcome back to the Five Acre Pond Build. If you missed the first videos in this series, I'll put links down in the description below. All right, folks, we finished up the dock yesterday. Let's take a look. So I got him to leave these two posts because later on in this video, I'm gonna be installing a light system and I needed a spot to mount the junction box. So I'm gonna mount it right there on that post. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but let's go check out the dock. I think he did a good job. Everything looks good to me. Perfect location you could still make a cast over there to the oak throne and you could jump off here swim to the island so the next project is to extend that pipe all the way out there into the deep area of the pond so we can start pumping water into it but one last thing i want to do before we do that is move that gravel over here under this dock that way I'm not running over the pipe when I do it. So we're gonna hop on the tractor and get that spread out first. So in case any of you are wondering why we put the pea gravel around the pond, it's because the bluegills love to spawn in it. So this will be a perfect spawning habitat right around the dock. So now it is finally time to name our new pond and announce the winner of the giveaway. So if you missed the first videos in this series, I asked you all to leave a comment down below on what we should name the new pond. And whoever's comment we ended up choosing, we would fly you out to be one of the first people to come and fish the pond. So I spent this past week reading through thousands of comments. It literally took hours, but I wanted to make sure that I read every one of them and got all of the suggestions for the pond name. So before I show you guys the winner, I wanted to show some honorable mentions. So there were dozens of comments saying name it the peanut pond or the peanut puddle and even the peanut hatchery, all good comments. Makes perfect sense because we built it on a peanut farm. And then Jordan says, name it the Outlaw Oasis. And I did like that because as all of you know, our two pet bass that are going into the pond are named Bonnie and Clyde. That would have went perfect. Next up is Okeechobee. And the thing I really liked about this one is the way he added that oak in the beginning of it. And Preston said the Dixie Pond, living in Alabama. I definitely like that one. And next up, since the island is called Alcatraz, you should name the whole pond the Bermuda Triangle. And I did like that because early on it was definitely taking that triangle shape. And then we did have a lot of references from the Game of Thrones, like the Westeros Pond, because of that oak throne stump. So as I was reading through all of these comments and trying to narrow everything down to just a few, I started thinking about it. I wanted to name the pond after something specific to the property. And while it is a peanut farm right now, maybe in a couple years, we may not ever grow peanuts on it again. So I didn't want to go towards the peanuts. So the one thing that stuck out in my mind is the big 150 year old oak tree. It was very unfortunate that the oak tree got blown over during Hurricane Sally, but it turned out to be the exact location of where we were building the pond. So to me, I had to name it after the oak tree because that tree had sat there in the exact pond location for the last 150 years. So while I was looking through all of the oak tree related names, I wanted to find something unique because there's already so many different oak names out there like mossy oak or white oak, oak hollow. And when I came across this comment from Wooski that said you should name it the Crimson Oak Lake, I thought that that was the perfect name because one of the things that really stood out whenever we were taking this tree to the mill was that red stained oak wood. So the official name is now the Crimson Oak Pond. So as soon as we stock the pond, we are going to fly Wooski in to come fishing with us. And we're hopefully going to do a lot more of these in the future because I want as many of you subscribers to come out and fish with us as possible. All right, I just went out and got 200 feet of two inch pipe. I'm going to run it to the wood pile right past the oak throne back there where the ducks floating and i put that section of pipe out there so i didn't have to glue it together out there in the water so i'm gonna glue that together get all this glued together and then attach both of them now i had a lot of good comments and ideas about how i should run the pipe a lot of people said poke holes throughout the pipe so it'll disperse the water and help prevent the erosion but the one thing i'm concerned about if you put water out here it's still just going to drain down there and maybe create some more erosion but another good idea was to put floats up under the pvc so as the water level rose the pvc would rise with it that's a pretty good idea i may look into that and then some of you guys said run it right over the oak throne right there and the only problem with that is that once it fell into that puddle it goes down to the next puddle and it may erode that one little section right there there was a waterfall there when we first started getting water in so as of right now i'm just going to run it back there i am going to put a 90 on it so it's going to shoot it up into there but i'm thinking about tying it off to that log right there or either putting the floats up under it. All right, that worked out just as planned. Now the tricky part is gonna be getting the last piece to two pieces on out there while I'm standing in the water. Had to bring in the last section of pipe which puts it right at 200 feet. This one's working out just like you draw it up. 
the end of the pipe ended up right between the wedge and that tree. So the last thing I have to do is get this 90 put on and it is about waist deep out there. So that's plenty of depth. All right, that little white piece of pipe sticking up between those two logs is the 90 that I put in there. I actually have a GoPro set up right there at it. So we'll be able to watch it as soon as it comes out. Here we go. Quick look at the well, five horsepower pump that outputs a hundred gallons a minute. I'm about to turn it on. That's pretty neat, all that water pressure just pushed that pipe right up to the surface. Check it out, folks. Could not have planned it better. We have our very own natural waterfall. Now keep in mind, eventually all of that's gonna be underwater, so I'm probably gonna move it somewhere back in this area, maybe up on top of that at that point. But one thing I'm interested to see is how long it takes for this puddle right here to overtake that land and then fill this whole area in. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow. We're gonna leave it on overnight. Man, that's awesome. Almost four months ago, we broke ground on the five acre pond. And now we're finally at that stage everybody's been waiting on time to fill it up definitely going to be curious to see how this affects the electricity bill if any of you out there run a well pump 24 7 leave me a comment down below on what it cost you all right folks back out here at the pond to check on the status and it's been about 12 hours since i turned the pump on you can definitely tell right there in that area i walked across that yesterday another good indicator are the tunnels it's about halfway up the second tunnel so Water's risen almost a foot, which is good. Now it's not going to take much longer to get throughout this entire shallow area. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that project I have over at the dock. All right, now that we're pumping the well water in, you know, we got to get a time lapse of everything. So, so far I hadn't had a good angle that captures the whole pond. So I just drove this stake down in the ground and I'm going to hook a GoPro up on time lapse mode. And then I'm going to mount that battery backpack to this post right here and it should last a full day so i have to come out each day and swap that out but hey we got to get our time lapse all right got it all set up i got two concerns one of them that it's still 88 89 degrees here in alabama i'm hoping it doesn't overheat the camera because a lot of times gopros will shut off whenever they reach that over temp and the second is i hope we don't get any rain because in order to plug that battery backpack in you got to leave that door open so if we get any rain we might lose the gopro maybe the battery pack so now let's talk about the next project. So once this pond fills up with water, I want to put in some underwater cameras so I can live stream 24 seven and you guys can watch these fish up under the water. I want to put one of them obviously right over there by the Oak throne, but if I'm going to live stream 24 seven, I need to have some lights out here. So I want to put some underwater glowing lights, one of them right over there and maybe a couple right here around the pier, probably one on each corner. So I did a lot of research on underwater light systems and this is the best one that I found. It comes from underwaterfishlight.com. They have their own website and basically it's a prefabricated control box and it's got three different lights. These two are 100 feet and that's a 50 footer. And the cool thing about it is the control box. So it's got a photo cell that you mount right on top of it. So the lights come on right at dark and then cut off at daylight and it's got a built in fan and you can see the ventilation. And one of the reasons I got the dock builder to leave these two posts is I'm gonna mount it right there on the side of that post. Now, a lot of docks leave those pilings sticking up, but this is basically built to be a fishing dock, so I didn't want the pilings getting in the way of fishermen, and I didn't wanna mount our lighting box down there. To, it'd be a little too close to the water. And this setup comes with a few different options. One of them is the brightness. You can either get bright or extra bright, and we chose the extra bright because you get even more glow up underwater. And then you have a few different colors to choose from. Two of them are greenish looking and one of them's blue. We chose the vibrant green. And I'll put a link down in the description in case you want to check them out, underwater fish light. All right, I got the back plate mounted on to the piling. Now we're just gonna bolt that to it. Easy installation. That's one of the things I loved about this system. It's extremely simple to install. Maybe took five minutes max. Last thing we're gonna do here add the photo cell 
Now I'm probably going to run a dedicated 20 amp circuit out here to power this guy and probably put a GFI circuit right there on the back side of it. So I think I'm just going to run the cables up under the dock. Pretty cool looking bulbs here. Can't say I've ever seen one quite like that before. But what you do is you basically just run a couple zip ties through it and leave about that much slack and it floats up so it'll be floating right off the bottom there. So I got one cable ran. I basically just ran it over the top of each of those beams. I'm going to come back with some of those fencing nails, get that tightened up, and then we're going to run it right down that piling up under the rocks. And that one's going to go out there to the oak throne. All right, I'm running out of daylight here, but I'll show you where I got them installed. The first one's going to be to the left of the dock, and then the second will be out there by the oak throne. And the last one I decided to put right over here because I figured if you had that white bottom with that pea gravel, it'd be really easy to see the fish when you're up there fishing off the dock at night. All right, so you just zip tie it to the weight there, and this light fixture is going to float up just like that. I wish I had my electricity ran to the dock already, and we'd sit out here and test them out tonight. But very easy installation. I'd highly recommend. We'll be showing you these lights as soon as we get enough water out here. We got the girls out there playing on the dock and some good news we finally got the big arms tractor back three thousand dollars later we fixed the wiring harness and i asked you guys for some tips on how to keep rats and mice out of a tractor and i got dozens and probably hundreds of comments on things to do so we're going to do every one of them check out what we got so these were the most popular comments that we got Starting off, number one, Irish Spring Soap. Everybody knows how that stuff smells. I'm going to stuff two of them down in a sock, put it in the tractor. Next up, dryer sheets. I think the idea is to make it smell like humans or maybe to scare the rats off. I'm not 100% sure on that. Next up, we got mothballs. Everybody knows how those things smell. We even got this rodent repellent spray recommended to us. And I just looked up the ingredients on that. That is peppermint oil. And that's what a lot of people said to use. If you guys could only smell right now the different types of concoctions we have, it's a pretty unique smell. Another thing that I like is this little guy right here. It goes through a sequence. So it starts off with a strobe light and all the time it's emitting this high frequency sound that'll drive a rat crazy. But we got the good stuff coming up here in just a second. That's a little ticking sound, but the next one's much better. All right, we're going to shut it off. So there's no way a rat should be able to sleep through all that or build a nest inside the tractor. But worst case scenario, we got a secret sauce. Let me show you what it is. But here's the secret sauce. You mix vinegar, cayenne pepper into a spray bottle and spray it on the wires. If they bite into it, it's going to bite back. So we're basically going to take that and spray it all over that new harness. There's no way that a rat could enjoy eating cayenne pepper and vinegar. And worst case scenario, we may even have to put a rat cam on the tractor and see if the little critters come out at night. But I think these options are gonna work for us. All right, I got socks stuffed everywhere with the good stuff in it and I've sprayed down and I put the little rodent sound mechanism right there on top of the battery, strapped it in. We ought to be good to go. First night of the Kubota out here on the farm, good luck. Now it's time to check in on the two pet ducks, Allie and Bam Bam. You can see now that Bam Bam's getting a little older. He's starting to get that green head. And Sarah's been doing a really good job of taking care of the new ducks and learning that farm life. Is that filming that? Mm -hmm. Now let's take a quick look at the predator cam. We got deer strolling through. That's typical. They're out there eating the peanuts this time of year. But watch what happens right after these couple deer come through. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that this is a fox. Definitely too small to be a coyote. We see the coyotes around here all the time. And it looks a little smaller, and with that bushy tail, I'd say it's a fox. And the owl has been coming back through some. He doesn't really pester the ducks anymore. I think he's given up on trying to get in the cage. But check this owl out. He is humongous. There's a pair of them. One of them's a lot bigger than the other one. <laughs> I think it's funny to watch the owls walk. Another deer coming through, not really sure what to think about the ducks. And look at what decided to show up. It's Mr. Pepe Le Pew himself. This is the first skunk that we've seen out at the farm. 
And man, he's a big boy too. It seems like all the animals around here are really big. But this is the one that I can't figure out. I have no idea what these two animals are. They're way too short to be a fox. And they've got those long bushy tails and they're definitely wild animals. You can tell by their mannerisms. It looks like they smell something and they're trying to figure out where it's coming from. But I have no idea what this type of animal is or if they're a predator of ducks. So if you guys know what it is, leave it in a comment down below. Now it is time to feed Mr. Moby. Alright folks, that is going to wrap up this video. Just a heads up, we're going to be doing some traveling over the next couple months, so we may not put a pond video out every Sunday, but we're going to do our best to get one out every week that it's possible. We are going to try to keep that time lapse going and watch the entire process as it fills up, but make sure to hit that subscribe button because we're right here at the end of the project, and I don't want you to miss out on the finale, but I hope you all enjoyed this one, and we will see you all next time.